Okay, it looks like we're finally live. Apologize for the delays, and it might be a different link. I might just uh, tweet this out for people so that you know what's going on here. I'm just going to send this out real quick. Twitter. There we go. Got to let all my followers know what's going on. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? There's a, there is a method to this madness to get this uh, live stuff going. <laughs> I apologize for you. Uh... Okay. Yeah, okay. Is it working? Uh, what I've discovered, I apologize for the delay, guys. I just had some diff technical difficulties with the live streaming software. Um, what I've discovered is that um, using my software to do things in advance doesn't work. I kind of have to get streaming first and then start the stream on YouTube to get things going. Anyways, we'll figure it out in the future. Uh, welcome to the Tesla Owners Online channel. And today we're doing something a little different. Um, the channel uh, started as a, as, a, as a Tesla thing, actually started as a personal channel and then got really involved with Tesla and stuff because of the forum and all the other things that I've been doing. But it's still very much technology focused. So um, on the odd chance, if you come to the channel, you see Tesla owners and stuff and we do these things on the side, you'll understand why. Now, Today we're going to do an unboxing of what I believe is probably the first uh, Creality Ender 6. This is a brand new printer. I'll talk about this in a second um, in Canada, I think. I, I can't verify that. But anyway, um, if you're into 3D printing, um, you know, I'm not an expert or anything like that, but uh, it is something that I've been toying with for the last two years and I've uh, loved my Creality Ender 3. There are several different models. There's a three, there's a five, and this is the new six. They also sell another line of printers called the CR series. So if you're coming here and expecting to see the new CR6 SE, this is not the printer. This is a different animal altogether. I'll talk about the specs here in a second. But anyways, so I ordered this printer, pre-ordered it about three weeks ago, something like that. Um, I've been using an Ender 3, fantastic, very affordable printer. I, I think you can buy them for like a couple hundred bucks US. I've been using that for the last uh, two years. Loved it. I still own it. I still use it. Um, matter of fact, if you look at my channel, I did a massive 3D print of a, uh, a SpaceX Dragon capsule, which has been fantastic. Anyway, so using this uh, printer uh, for a number of years, I've uh, been wanting to get something a little more sophisticated, uh, a little bigger. And um, after much research, I decided to go with, um, well, sometimes the devil that you know. I've looked at other competitors and, you know, there's, uh, you know, in the 3D printing space, there's a lot of people that will talk about, well, you need this printer because of this and that printer because of that. Well, because I'm still relatively new, I wasn't really keen on experimenting with somebody else's printer. I like this company. I, I, I understand how they work and I'm familiar with the parts and the processes of being able to modify it because my, my Ender 3 has uh, a number of different modifications that I've done to it to get it dialed in the way that I like. The nice thing about 3D printers is that most of them are open source and uh, you can really tinker with them if, if that's your thing. So let's talk about the Ender 6. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, well, I apologize because apparently they haven't been doing very good marketing on this thing, but it is brand new, just came out. This is Creality's very first Core XY printer. Now, what is Core XY? Well, the vast majority of 3D printers that you can buy for home hobbyists are Cartesian printers, which is, has a bed that moves, and then the gantry goes back and forth, and that kind of, um, you know, it's a different setup. Uh, this, what you end up with is a bed that doesn't move in the Y-axis. It only moves in the Z-axis, only goes up and down. And then you have a fixed gantry at the top that is controlled via two stepper motors that are not, on, not mounted on the gantry itself. So... 
theoretically, what it does is it allows for faster printing uh, because you have less mass, I believe, for the head to move around. Anyway, so compared to an Ender 3, this is supposed to be about 150% faster. It also has a number of other improvements on it, namely that you can put a full enclosure on it. Now, when I ordered this, they didn't offer the enclosure on it at the time, which is all the plexiglass sides. Um, I only print on PLA. Many people print uh, with ABS. Um, and apparently with ABS, you need more of a temperature controlled kind of setting. So they, they put them in boxes and that stuff. So anyways, um, that's one of the things you can get for this is an optional kit that gives you the full enclosure with the plexiglass side so that you can do more heat control. Um, over in Ender 3, this thing has a filament runout sensor. So if you're doing long prints and maybe you're a little short on PLA or something, um, the system will stop if it detects the filament runs out. So it gives you a chance to stop the print or actually stops on its own. You can come back, fill up your, your spool again and then get printing again. Um, it has the same uh, kind of um, resume and print that the Ender 3 is famous for. Um, I believe the hot end is the same thing on this thing. The fan is the same thing. This has an upgraded uh, board, however. I think it uses TMC2208 drivers, which is supposed to make it very, very quiet over an Ender 3. Um, color touch screen. Um, the Ender 3 just has a knob you press and stuff, although there's lots and lots of upgrades on that. So anyways, that's what we're going to do. We're going to unpack this thing. I literally received it yesterday. I wasn't expecting to see it until uh, February 26, but lo and behold, just showed up on doorstep. So I figured I'd do an unboxing today and uh, we'll assemble it and then you guys can take a look at it. Let me just check the uh, chat here before I go if there's anything that you guys want to see here. Uh, yes, I probably, yes, I get, uh, no, I don't have two streams, guys. I had problems with the first one, so this is the one to watch. How easy is it update uh, the firmware? That's a good question. Um, this uses a new uh, controller board um, that I believe already has a bootloader on it. If not, I already have an Arduino set up because one of the mods I did on my Ender 3 uh, was to flash it with Marlin firmware. If you're not familiar, Marlin is probably the most popular um, 3D printer firmware that you can get for um, FDM printers. And um, I use that so that you can come uh, go in and customize because one of the things I did to my Ender 3 was added a BL Touch bed leveling sensor. Wonderful little product, by the way. I uh, highly recommend if you want to tinker and get really good um, first layer prints, I highly recommend some kind of bed leveling sensor because it takes all the guesswork out of um, making sure you get first level prints. So, And that's one of the things you can add to this. They actually have an official kit now you can buy um, and this the, um, printer officially supports it. So. Let's open this up and have a quick look at the insides. <gasps> I have a surprise for you. <laughs> I didn't order it this way, but um, okay. Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, so here's your booklet. Um, apparently, this uh, booklet and the revised booklets for the um, Ender 3 are much, much better. Uh, I remember on mine, it was like a fold-out sheet. Eh, it was kind of... Eh. But they've really stepped up their game with the assembly. It's very kind of Ikea-like. They show you, um, you know, the steps to take. So kudos on them for improving the book manual. I'm really looking forward to that. All right, here's the surprise. I wasn't expecting this. It actually comes with the plexiglass enclosure. I wasn't expecting that. Um, the one that I ordered, it didn't show it online, but it just showed that it was an open. So you have the... Um, uh, the extrusions on the side, so it's completely open. So I'm actually very surprised at this, that they included the uh, the plexiglass enclosure. So uh, they have a protective film on them. That's why they're blue right now. We'll take that off later. Might not even install that as part of the uh, setup here for you guys, but uh, I'm very I'm, I'm happy to see this. Uh, okay, so we have a broken piece here on the bottom. Not a big deal. It's very here on the bottom, so I'm going to set that aside. Remember, this thing comes all the way from China, so you're bound to have some problems. So three sides, set that aside. I'm just checking here to see. Oh, it's just a scratch on the plastic. All right. Let's pull some of this out. Ah, uh, yes. So remember, as I said, it has a full enclosure. So here are the doors with hinges and a oh, an actual aluminum door handle. That's not plastic. That's nice, I like that. All right, so there's one door there. Set that down, and then there's another door on this side here. Peels off. Well, this is nice, because if I ever decide to do uh, PLA in the future, well, guess what, I'm already set up. Um, I did watch the live stream when they announced this uh, printer some time ago, 
And uh, they showed it with the doors and they said that uh, if you wanted to order it without the doors, you could do that, but they would make the doors as a separate option later on. And then lo and behold, mine showed up at the doors. So, oh, by the way, in case you're asking, you're gonna wanna know about price, right? Everybody wants to know the price. Um, this was pre-ordered. I think this is gonna retail for 5.99 US. I think I paid 5.69. Something like that. Um, landed in Canadian dollars was about $877 plus. I don't know. I had to pay for some shippings and duties and stuff like that. So just over $900. Not too bad for a Core XY printer compared to everything else. So anyways, there's a little uh, box here that has, uh, let's see here, U, uh, US power supply, all of the screws, bolts, all metric, lovely. And a uh, filament retainer spool that goes on the side of the unit when it gets mounted. There's some uh, some cables. We'll set that aside. Some spare parts. Looks like some more nozzles and some quick disconnects for the Bowden cable. They do include a eight gigabyte SD card and a USB um, adapter. So to put that in your laptop, there's a spatula. Need that. That's always good. Let's put this over here. There's another box here with some tools. So they do give you a screwdriver, a little spanner wrench, Allen keys, and uh, yes, the ubiquitous uh, acupuncture <laughs> needle. Why they give you an acupuncture needle? Well, that's if you got stuck uh, plastic in your nozzle, you got something to jam in there to get it unstuck. I've used mine a couple of times. All right, here's the other difference um, compared to an Ender 3. This has a larger bed. So this is... Um, an Ender 3 is 200, uh, 220 millimeters, 20, 220 by 250. This printer, I believe, um, is 240 by 240 by 400, so larger print volume. Um, they've also included a glass bed on here rather than the Ender 3 uh, usually comes with a magnetic, the new ones. They have a magnetic bed that's flexible and you peel it off. Um, honestly, I, I had a really tough time with my Ender 3 when I first got it printing on that, uh, the first bed that I had. It wasn't magnetic. It was just like a, a platen thing. I ended up switching. I ended up buying just a plain old mirror, a five millimeter uh, mirror, and I would use Elmer's glue. And uh, that guaranteed I got very good adhesion on the plate. But I'm very glad to see they include a glass plate on this now. So, And then you have your traditional four... Um, uh, knobs here for leveling the bed and a very nice large heating element. A nice blanket on there too to keep it from uh, coming out. So you got a connector for your thermistor and then a connector for power. And it looks like it has some very decent springs on there. So solid, solid bed on that. So let's just set this aside for a second. I got to be very careful because that is glass after the fact. Let's just check the comments, make sure we're okay here. Jason says, man, this would be a rabbit hole for me. I wanted to get into 3D printing. Yeah, you know what? The thing about 3D printing, and, and I resisted getting into it. This is not new. It's been around for a while. And I resisted getting into 3D printing because all I ever saw online were people make, making little uh, trinkets and stuff. And, and I was like, that's not for me. Like, why would I? I I'm not going to waste my time building trinkets. And then let me tell you a story. <laughs> I'll keep unpacking here. Um, my refrigerator has an arm sensor uh, that detects uh, the level of ice in the ice box. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we sometimes have a habit of throwing stuff on that side. Anyways, to make a long story short, the arm broke and I was in a pickle and I needed to get that fixed. And I looked online for the cost of the replacement arm and I thought, you know what? I've been wanting a 3D printer for some time. Maybe it's an excuse to buy one and maybe I can design my own. That's precisely what I did. Bought the Ender 3, got it, and designed my own printer arm, or uh, designed my own um, replacement arm, printed it out, and it fit the first time. It's been working great ever since. So for me, 3D printing has been um, something that I've used around the house to actually save myself money in many cases for all kinds of things. I mean, I have a brand new gate uh, on the outside of the house, and I've used it to build... Um, uh, I've des designed plastic parts to be able to, to open the gate. A anyways, I've used it all around the house to make useful things. I have not made anything that's been little trinkets or anything like that. So, uh, and like I said earlier in the stream that I built the uh, SpaceX uh, capsule and stuff. So that's about the, the least useful thing I've ever built with it. 
Um, all right, so let's talk about some more of the parts. Uh, this is the filament uh, extruder. And this is another improvement uh, I've noticed on this unit compared to the Ender 3 is that the extruder, oh my gosh. Okay, sorry if I'm moving around a little bit because when I first saw the unit uh, announced online and some of the specs online, I was like, okay, that part looks okay, but it looks like, well, that's an opportunity for an upgrade. And lo and behold, that from what I've seen already, <laughs> this is already better than I expected. The filament extruder is not only metal, because the Ender 3 is plastic, and I was expecting this because it was shown in the specs, but what I didn't notice is that it's actually, it's dual drive. So it actually has two gears on it that will grip the plastic and push it through. I'm super happy to see this. This has been one of the problems I've had on my Ender 3. Matter of fact, I even bought a new uh, replacement for the extruder for the uh, filament at the top from plastic to metal. I haven't installed it yet, but I bought it. And um, I'm glad to see that this is actually uh, a, dual um, a dual gear extruder on this and it's all aluminum. Wonderful, I love it. Okay, so let's set that motor aside. Let's just check the comments, make sure I'm missing anything. What 3D design software? Ah, oh, that's a very good question. Um, I use Fusion 360. Um, so I use that. You can get an educational license. It doesn't cost you anything. And um, that software is fantastic because it allows you to do I mean, they're, they're continuously upgrading that software. There's always all kinds of new features. I just scratched the surface of what it's possible to do. I, I took uh, drafting when I was in high school, <laughs> very early 80s, dating myself, and everything was done with pen and paper. And I liked the idea of designing things, but I hated the pen and paper aspect of drafting. I hated it. Uh, you made a little mistake. You had to erase everything. I love 3D software now because... You know, I've always enjoyed the, the drafting part, just not the fixing part. And now with 3D software, it's so easy to use the software. I mean, it's affordable and it just, your mind is just opened up to the possibilities of things you can build. All right, let's keep unpacking here. So this is the filament runout sensor. So you put the fil filament in there, it has a connector to the main board. And this is what detects when your filament runs out. So it will stop a print. And then I have to be careful here. Uh, let's see here, we have the aluminum extrusions. So there's, let's see here, one, two, three, four of them. Um, there is a circuit board. I apologize here for the reflections here, but there's a little circuit board mounted here. Um, so it looks like part of it goes to the main board and this is where all of your other uh, electronic connections go onto that. So we'll set that aside for now. And now we have the Z axis section. So this is your lead screw here. So you have your um, stepper motor on there and a lead screw. There is no spring on there for backlash, although I'll have to double check and see if it's on the other part. And uh, you have um, yeah, V-mounted gears, although that one feels... What's going on here? It feels like there's a flat spot, but there's not. Maybe it's a magnet that's... It feels like it's magnetized, see that? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll inspect that a little bit later. So we'll set that down. And then we have some more packing material. All right. Um, okay, let's see here. Some plastic corners. These go as uh, finishing things on the, um, on the printer. Uh, why they use blue, I, I have no idea. Not keen on the blue, but beggars can't be choosers at this point. So there's a bunch of those. I'll set that out. And then here's the big part. This is the, let's see here. This is the actual upper gantry of the printer. Let me pull this out. Okay, so this is the top of the printer. And let me just set it like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, so there are two stepper motors on the corners. And this is what makes this uh, what's called a core XY. It was designed by some people at MIT. And the idea here is you have two pulleys that run, they're serpentine pulleys that go through. And then I believe the reason the, they did it like this is that now you don't have um, extra mass on the head that moves around. So um, this will move around uh, a little more freely. It, it's, it's more precise, but apparently um, it'll actually print faster. I've seen some printers. I saw a guy online who built his own Core XY printer, and he was doing 800 millimeters per second, 1,000 millimeters per second. I mean, really fast stuff. Something I just noticed the <laughs> um, 
If you're familiar with an Ender 3, there is a little fan here on the side for the hot end. So there's a part that cools the hot end, and then there's a fan that cools the nozzle part, and uh, it's molded in plastic. Well, this one is actually 3D printed itself, so <laughs> it's curious to see that. And then they're actually including on the, um, the hot end now an actual silicon boot, which is really nice. I actually had to change the hot end on my Ender 3 recently because it just got gummed up with plastic. That's one of the things you suffer from. So I think this is kind of a standard thing they're putting on all the printers. So this is the gantry. So it gives you a pretty good idea of, you know, the size of the printer. This uh, lays on top. And then you've got a Bowden cable on here. I don't know what quality this is. I do have some Capricorn um, Bowden cabling, uh, which I may change out. It's uh, supposed to be better. And um, yeah, so let's just set this aside for a second and then we'll pull out the main part of the printer and we'll get assembly. Okay, there we go. All right, let's just make sure we're not missing anything. Yes, and they give you the ubiquitous tiny little spool of PLA plastic. Yeah, if you're just starting out with printing, yeah, you can you know, start with that, but I uh, highly encourage that you buy uh, quality PLA. Uh, they're usually sold in one kilogram spools. They cost about $25. And I have a variety of different colors. Um, by the way, I should mention these printers can print more than just plastic. You can print uh, TPU, which is a flexible plastic. So you can make little rubber cases for your iPhones, cell phones, that type of thing. So it's so lots of different kinds of plastics out on the market you can use. All right, so here's the main part of the bottom of the unit. Let me just lift this out. And then we'll set the box aside and we can just start. Oh, look at that. It's huge. All right, touch screen. So let me just move this box out of the way very carefully. Toss that under my kitchen table. There we go. Okay, so here's our unit. Oh yeah, nice footprint on that. Okay, so there's a cavity down here for the stepper motors. Let's have a little tour here. So you have a touch screen here on the front all metal construction. Um, access to the main board is not via trap door. You're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take the whole bottom of the printer off um, this door on the bottom to get at that, but that's not a concern right at this particular time. It is something that I will probably do in the future if I need to do some kind of upgrades, we shall see. So I don't know if my table is off a little bit or the unit needs to be leveled. Actually, speaking of which, let's just see here. Yeah, so the rubber feet are not leveled. There's no way to level them, so I'll probably have to shim it or something. Okay. There we go. I need a swig of water. It's hot in here today. All right. Let's check the comments and see if I've missed anything. Uh, let's see here. Who's your ass? Uh, can you use Wi-Fi to air print to this? No, there's no uh, capability of doing that. A lot of people like to use something called OctoPrint, which I believe is like a little Raspberry Pi that you can plug into this and you can send um, prints to it remotely over Wi-Fi. Um, I, I really don't do that. I, I design everything on my computer and then I go into my workshop and then I just plug in the SD card and off I go from there. So I don't really have a need for that, but it is something you can do, but you need to do that kind of uh, third party. Uh, Jason asks, have you seen those printers that work with nylon carbon fiber composite? Yes, I have. It's pretty neat. You can actually buy that. Um, my friend um, uh, Sasha Annis at Mountain Pass Performance has a large 3D printer and he's done some very large uh, ducts uh, for his cars uh, in that carbon fiber stuff. It's pretty neat. Uh, it, I don't really have a need for it right now, but it is something I might experiment with in the future. All right. So I think the first thing we need to do, according to the instructions, let's get our tools ready here. Whoop. Almost acupunctured myself there. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, yes, in the tools, they give you a nice pair of side cutters. These are super handy, by the way. Love the side cutters. Everyone needs a good pair of side cutters and a spatula. If you get into 3D printing, you'll understand why. Okay, so we got Allen keys. Even though I brought my own set of Allen keys, uh, they do supply you with everything that you need. Matter of fact, 
These are the ball end type, which is nice. We can get into 45 degree corners. I like that. All right, and then they give you all the screws. So we'll need to pull these out too. Less unsprung mass, yes. That is the reason why uh, Core XY printers were designed. More faster. All right. So we got M4s, M5s, M520s, M4s, longer screws, M45s, M25s. Let's uh, open up this cellophane. Oh, this stuff is really strong. Okay. Okay. All right, these are labeled one. And this one is labeled number two. So that goes there. There's, there's stickers on top of the box. I don't know if you can see that on camera here. And I do believe this one goes in this corner like so, because that's I've seen it before. That's where the circuitry goes. All right, let's, um, let's just double check our instructions, make sure that we got everything that we need to do things in the right order. Uh, let's see here, you guys. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So we need four of the tubes. Um, and then you need the M45 45s, which are the longer ones. So we use these screws. And then we need the appropriate Allen key, which is that one. Okay, good. All right, so we'll take these. And uh, we'll set the printer kind of on its side, kind of like that. Looking to see if there's one in that's threaded or not. So I'll just kind of sit that, I believe, like that. Just double check where the holes go. Um, it appears that they're drilled, they're match drilled on both sides, so it doesn't really appear to matter all that much. So I'll just. Uh, Finger tight to get that started. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. There's only one screw on the bottom. Okay, then. I was expecting to see uh, two screws on the bottom of each one of these, but there's only one. I'm not going to do it super tight just so that I get everything kind of lined up and then we'll make sure everything is straight after the fact. I'll do the two bottom ones so that itself, um, so that it stays up on its own. I don't have to fight with it. I'll do the far end next. I think personally, I mean, these are not moving all that much. Would have been nice to have some kind of like a, a tab or another screw or something like that but I can see there's two screws going in there so uh, I mean that adds to the interference that's why you can't put that on there but so far so good all right this last one here just got to make sure that I get the 
these screws, these parts, the right position. It looks like this one goes um, on the lower part. I want to make sure I don't have any wires in the way. Well, it feels like it's squared up 90 degrees, so maybe I can just kind of do this like that. And then I will very carefully, I know the screen's going to get interfered here for a second, but I just want to get this in here. That's good. This one feels off a bit. Or maybe it's just because it's, ah, there we go. It wasn't straight. Okay. All right. So we have um, four extrusions in the upper right position. Uh, let's just double check here. Make sure we're not missing anything. And then the next step is to install the top frame, which I find interesting because, okay. Same thing, so the gantry goes on top. And again, four M45 screws, bolts. Uh, Hoosier asks, I use Cura to slice. What are you using for the ender? Same thing, Cura is, um, is my go-to. I've tried uh, the other one, Simplify 3D, whatever. Uh, I just couldn't get used to the interface. Um, I use Cura, works well. I have a really good profile. That's the other thing about 3D printing. If you're ever getting into it, expect to tinker a lot until you find just the right mix of everything that you want. Um, and uh, I would say when I first got my printer, I probably spent the better part of... Um, three months, three to six months on and off, uh, dialing in everything just the way that I liked it. And um, now that I have it, I get great prints. But uh, yeah, if you, if you think that you're gonna get a 3D printer um, out of the box and get magnificent prints um, right out of the, uh, the gate, um, I mean, you might get lucky, but expect a tinker. But the nice thing is that once you do get everything dialed in, um, you're going to have a lot of fun. Remember, 3D printing has been around for quite a long time. I think it's been around since the early 80s, but it only became commercially um, available or affordable to the masses uh, probably about 10 to 15 years ago. And uh, now that it's available, I mean, you can you can 3D print, like SpaceX, for example, 3D prints a bunch of stuff for the uh, Draco 3D, or the uh, Draco motors that they use on the capsule. Those are actually, the, the combustion chambers are actually 3D printed. So yeah, you can do metal. So, wow, this is going together really easy and fast. Except for that one there, there she goes. Last thing you want is to cross thread anything. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah, lovely. Okay, there we go. Mistake number one. There we go. Uh, getting back to your question, I use Cura. I like it a lot. I, um, I ended up developing my own profile for my Ender 3, um, looking at what other people have done and just kind of getting things around. Um, the thing about uh, 3D printing is that uh, you, you very quickly learn how to use your, your, your slicer, <laughs> what to do and what not to do. When you're, when you're printing parts, you end up having to print them because the printers build from top, uh, from bottom to top. Uh, the orientation of how you put your parts uh, is critical because the last thing you want to do is have a lot of support material because if you have overhangs, uh, 3D printers can't print stuff with overhangs, otherwise the plastic sags. So sometimes if you have a big overhang, depending on the angle that you set in the software, it has to build a support material up to it, like a gantry. Or if you think like the flying buttresses of the uh, medieval uh, 
cathedrals. Um, that's kind of the same principle in order to support it. And then, of course, when you take it off, you, you break it off and then uh, you're all set. Um, you want you don't want to print. <laughs> you want to print with as least amount of support material as possible. Trust me, uh, support material can be a royal pain in the butt. So that's one of the things you end up learning as you uh, as you work with this stuff. Okay, so now that the top is installed, uh, now we got to put the printing platform in, and let's just double check which screws we need for this uh, printing platform number one, the Z-axis component. So it says to take, put the bed onto the Z-axis. Uh, does it tell me which screws? Yes, we need the M5 20 millimeters. So M5 20, mil 20 millimeter screws, bolts. And we need six of those. So we need our printing bed. I'm just gonna put it kind of like that. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. Using an Ender 3 and a Cure here too. Yes, I love the Ender 3 and um, I, I haven't decided whether I'm going to sell it or not. Although I have a friend of mine, yeah, Nick, if you're watching, <laughs> it is available if you want it. I've done so many mods and upgrades to it. It's, it's, I mean, if somebody wants a printer, I mean, they're getting a really dialed in printer. You're going to get really fantastic prints out of it. Uh, these are cable guys. That's what this is all about. Okay. All right. I understand now. Okay, um, so yeah, if, if anybody's interested in that printer, um, you're getting a really dialed in printer. They do have a new version of the Ender 3 now, they call it V2, and honestly, I haven't really closely looked at the improvements compared to the first one, mainly because I'm not interested anymore, I got, I got this thing, but um, I have plans for this. We're gonna, we're gonna do some fun stuff with this thing. Um, I think one of the very first things now, we won't print anything today. We're just doing the assembly. Just wanted to show you the physical size, how it's actually kind of set up. Um, but I think one of the very first things I'm going to print on that is going to be another copy of the SpaceX uh, Falcon capsule. And, um, okay, this has to go upside down like this because the stepper motor goes on the bottom. Move these down. And uh, the reason is because I, I gave that to my friend Ian. <laughs> it was his birthday last month, and I felt terrible because I missed it. Um, he's very much like me. Um, birthdays for him are not a big deal. And then when I found out his birthday, I said, well, there's only one thing I could do is, is give him that. So anyways, Ian, if you're watching, once again, happy belated birthday. I hope you're enjoying your capsule. Okay, so this is going together pretty easily. So just going to line up these holes. And, yep. By the way, um, if you're going to build it, like I am, if you're interested in this printer, um, yeah, this is the way to do it. Put your, uh, put your build plate here and then slide this in, and it gives you just the, amount, the right amount of clearance and, and lift that you need to get the screws in without any effort whatsoever. I'll just snug these up. And then two more on this side. Okay, put this one in. I'll snug that up. Okay. Easy enough. Um, let's see here. Four bolts. That's easy enough. The whole thing then slides in. Then we need M525. So we need uh, these black ones. And the whole gantry goes, so they say to move the gantry this way. Get our Bowden tube and stuff out of the way. This is the other thing. I might end up putting um, like a coat wire or a coat rack or something like that. Um, I don't know, mount it on here just to keep this up and out of the way. Um, let me just make sure that the bed. Okay. 
you got to double check the instructions here just to make sure where we put in the bed because they don't tell you. There's a step missing here. Hold on. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Um, M25 times six. What did we use? One, two, three, four, five, six. So yes, I missed a step. So we need two more here. And that is for this, um, this part here of the bed with the lead screw. So we're gonna have to kind of zip that down. This part, I wish there was a fast forward to do. There's no insert, so I guess they go in from the top or the bottom? Bottom. Ah, there we go. Zip, zip. There we go. Let's lift that up, slide that in on the bottom. Okay. All right. This is the part where you can very carefully. I'm a little paranoid here because of the glass bed. I don't want it falling off or anything. That's just the plastic cover you're hearing there. Okay. And I just don't want it to cross thread here. Okay, that's one, and then one more on this side. Okay. If you guys have questions, go ahead and shoot them into the comments. I am kind of watching my screen once in a while just to see if there's anything I can answer as I go. Okay, so that takes care of that. I just want to make sure it's level. Okay, good. So this is the bed gantry, if you will, and then they say to slide it in from this direction. Of course, I don't want to hit my kitchen table light here, so I'm going to move this back just a little bit. That should be pretty good. Just like so. And then the whole stepper motor mechanism just kind of sits down inside the bed and it slides down. There we go. Check our instructions here for the next part. Um, M2525, so that's what these, M525s, these little guys. We need eight of these. Two in the bottom, four in the bottom, four in the top. Okay, easy enough. And is that the same one here? Okay. So what I'm going to do, so there's four bolts that go in through the back of the unit here on the, um, so there's another part right here and that sandwiches that. And then there's four more in the bottom. So I'm just going to throw a couple in just to get it lined up. Yeah. Oh, there we go. just to hold it in position so it doesn't move. Kind of like if you've ever changed wheels on a car, you want to make sure you, you bolt everything in the, in the pattern. Come on you, there we go. I'll just get all these started. Kind of go from there. Curious um, if anybody wants to talk into the chat there. How many of you came here because of the Tesla stuff? 
And how many of you came here from maybe Facebook or somewhere else where I posted where I was going to talk about this printer? How many of you? <laughs> if you came here because of the printer, welcome. If you're curious because you saw the word Tesla, welcome as well. By the way, best cars in the world. If you get a chance, please drive one. It'll change your life. I have lots of videos. I have over 350, 400 videos just on Tesla stuff alone. Subscribe to the channel. You get notifications whenever I post something new. Click the little bell icon so you know. Okay. So most of these screws are done now. I'm just going to... I, I did see another comment here. Hold on. I will answer it here in just a second. I just want to get this part done. All of these bolts have um, lock washers on them. So you don't need to get super tight on this stuff. It will not come apart. It is aluminum too. You don't want to be uh, tightening stuff down too much because you could strip the bolts. Again, there's not a lot of force on these printers. Things don't move around all that much. Okay. Okay, and then last one. And that's it. There we go. So that is the, uh, the hard part. <laughs> so this is uh, the printer fully assembled um, as far as the metal is concerned. We just have to make some connections here and there for the uh, variety of different objects. Let me just check the chat here and see if you guys... Uh, uh, so what is this thing? Some sort of robot surgery device? No, it's a 3D printer. Check the <laughs> check the link. Uh, let's see here. The extrusion goes on the other side. Sven Gali. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Um, now that we have this installed, they're talking about putting uh, the doors on and stuff. But I don't think I want to do that first. I think I'm going to want to do all the cabling and then do the doors. Let's just double check and see if there's any kind of interference that, that dictates why we should do it like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's because that's where the filament sensor and everything goes. So it has to go on to this side of the printer. So I guess that's what I'll do. Uh, for camera angle, let me think here if there's a way that I can do this easily for you guys. Um, <laughs> Let me think here. I could come on that side of the camera, but uh, maybe I'll just turn it a little bit so you guys can see off center. What I am going to do here is just going to take the couple of the screws out here from the cable guides out of the way. Oop. Just so that I have room to maneuver. Okay, there we go. So from the main board, there is a circuit board sitting on the on this particular rail, and this is where all of your um, your connectors come from. So you know you got your hot end and all that other stuff connects here, and then to the main board you have one single uh, looks like a power supply cable you'd find in a PC, whatever, and that just basically just slides up in here and then clicks into the circuit board. There we go. And then uh, these cable stays get put into there, but I'll do that later. Just on the off chance, there's probably some other cables. Um, on this side, there's a cable that runs to the bed. So very well made, by the way. It, this has the nice um, uh, woven sheathing on the cables and uh, they're zip tied on the ends. So on this side here with the bed, you've got your uh, connector for the thermistor, which is the, um, the temperature sensor, and then power to the heated bed. And then there's another cable that runs up the side here. And that plugs into this 
motor. And then uh, let's see here. Let me see how, how far I can get here. Uh, right. They give you some extra cables, remember? Yes, Trevor. Extra cables. These are labeled. So this one's labeled Y. This one is labeled E0. So that'll be for the motor, most likely this one right here. And there's another power cable here that says DET. Je ne sais pas what that is, but we'll check the manual here in a second. Um, so they're saying to put the uh, one of the doors on the side. So let's, uh, let's do that. We need, they call it a seal, but whatever. Um, let's put this over here so I don't miss my screws. Um, M20, M520. So we need this little baggie for these little screws. There's one, two, let's see here. It needs six of them. One, two, three, four, five, two, four, six. And we'll get the right Allen key. Yep, there we go. So we got to find the right door. Hello. Which is, which is this one. And uh, that hole that I showed you very early on goes on the bottom. So this door fits on like so. Um, but there is plastic covering, so I will not be able to get at it after the fact, so I might as well peel it off on this side. 